was asked by Havel, it was a collaboration between Havel, the NHS, secure contracts team, and partnerships in care to go in and start like a, a pilot scheme to develop good quality care and treatment plans for the Welsh patients there. When I went in, a bit of hostility first of all, I'd go down and I'd, and I'd sit down with the patient and I'd say, hi, my name's Darren McConnell, care and treatment plan champion for Havel. I come to talk to you about the mental health measures for Wales 2010, particularly part two, and then I'd have to like shake him and wake him up. Because he'd be like, and he'd say to me, look, man, you like, you look like a nice guy. You're just another man with another plan. So the next time I went down, I actually put, put down my, um, my book and my pen, and we just have a chat. We've got met, you know, where to, where to live, or living with that. Uh, is that something you'd like to go back to when in when the hospital? Yeah, well, yeah, like a nice little flat in, somewhere in Merthyr, uh, like, brilliant. Okay, so, you know, let's, let's talk about, it's just a little accommodation. All of a sudden, we are talking about accommodation. This is a, this is a plan, obviously, it's been anonymized. And when I get, first met this guy, shockingly, first of all, we've done a, um, a baseline questionnaire of all the, all the patients. And one of the questions were, do you know who your care coordinator is? 80% didn't even know what the care coordinator was, no matter who, the, who their care coordinators are. Another one, the mental health measure, it was in the remit of something like 90% didn't know what the mental health measure was, didn't know anything about care and treatment planning. Um, so when I looked at the plans, what I was seeing is different wards, they were having exactly the same outcomes. So it would be, when you, when you look at outcome to be achieved in accommodation, to, in, to adhere to ward rules, where is, the, where is that guy's voice in that plan? So when I sat down to him, that, this, is a, this is a guy from Swansea, who actually wanted to live in Swansea. So I didn't really know uh, if he was unwell at that particular time, but there we are, that's his choice. So speaking to him, and this is what he wanted. And again, in his outcome to be achieved, the accommodation was to adhere to ward rules. This is what he said to me. My long-term goal is to have my own flat with a ground floor for a small garden in Blindemice. Short term, I want to move into a lower secure step-down unit. I need to remain on green. Green is the, the rag system. So he's already positive thinking. If you're on red, you don't go anywhere. Exception sending leave is stopped. If you're on amber, it kind of start to work a bit more. If you're on green, then you've got, you, you know, you, you've got your access. Just by doing this plan with him, he automatically sat up, took, and I'm not lying to you, he actually sat up straight, took notice of what we were talking about. And I spent about an hour, two hours working with him, and going through, this is, this is what, this is what the type of, type of thing that we come out, come out of. But uh, most importantly, is in his words. So not, no medical jargon, as Dave said, and that is in the course of practice, no medical jargon. You, this is a boy from Merthyr, this particular guy is from Swansea, but, but I know a boy from Merthyr, you know, you start talking about theories and everything and he's just going to go sleep again. So, all in his own words, these were. Um, another thing, always, what I was finding is when I was, I was going to, to, to ward units, you know, some of the staff were saying to me, we are absolutely swamped, I, you know, I'd, I'd be copy and paste, and they would openly admit they'd copy and paste. Even to a point where, say the, the, the guy's name was Jeff, it would, I, I would read it and, he, and they would say, Gary will have to, because we've just copied and pasted and copied and pasted. How is that going to help anybody? How is that going to help partnerships in care? Because the more people that come through, and this is what I'm trying to explain to them, the more people that come through and get out the other end, go to lower secure settings and back into the community, the more people they're going to have coming through. So it's going to benefit the NHS, obviously, it's going to benefit uh, partnerships in care, and more importantly, it's going to benefit that particular guy. I, uh, there was one young lady I spoke to, and I went through her, her, um, her plans with her. We come to training and education. She said to me, I want to go back to equine studies when I, when I leave hospital. I've got a massive passion for horses. This is what I want to do. So I come out and I said to the to the one of the nurses there, I said, oh, we had a very good in depth chat with this lady. She's you no, know, oh she's lovely, and she oh she's oh I love her, I'm sure she's lovely. <laughs> when I went through the plan, she said she didn't like this. She didn't say this to you, but yeah, she did. What's an equine? So it's an horse lover. <laughs> but because she was like, oh she's lovely, and oh she's lovely, and tapping her on the head, it was that transaction analysis was parent child. So I think, well, you know, she is 21, she is, mm, you know what I mean? We need to be, although you think you're doing the right thing for her, you're not, because you're holding her back. 
Um, again, in the community, I see people day in, day out, and I speak to them about care treatment planning, and they say to me, well, I don't, I don't really know. They had, they had a, a meeting, they had a meeting about me, and they asked me to sign something. What good is that for anybody? That's not good, absolutely no good at all. Um, what I want to be seeing is they are saying to me, I had, I had, a, I had a meeting, and I was involved in this, in this plan. Okay, so this is a, this is a lady that um, obviously has been anonymized again. This is a lady I went to work with, and again, looking at her care and treatment plan, outcome to be achieved under accommodation was uh, maintain tenancy. Okay, so this lady, what she's got is she's got a three bedroom flat, she's paying 25 pound a week uh, bedroom tax, and what's happening is it's a negated situation where people can lean through and they were posting dog feces and everything through her uh, through her door. What she wanted, she still wanted to stay in that particular block of flats, but in the, one of the back flats, one bedroomed. Because obviously she was having a nightmare paying all this. So the care coordinator put maintain tenancy. Obviously they haven't spoken to this lady about this. So speaking to her, you know, she said, well, I, I can't. I can't manage. I've been paying 25 pounds a week there in tax, I can't manage. Short steps to get to that big goal. Okay, this is what you want to do. So we sat down and worked it out. She didn't know nothing about the discretionary housing payment. So we said, okay, what you need to be doing, you need to be going up to the one stop shop in Triwaki and you need to be getting your, um, get in the forms. I let them fill them in. Let's, let's get that sorted straight away. We need to contact your housing officer. So that's what we need to do. Housing provider, house officer, to be made aware of the position, an application to be made for a swap, to swap accommodation. So this is giving her now, this is not just maintaining tenancy, this is giving her self-management, this is giving, this is putting her in the driving seat. So she's got to go now to the, to, to the, the one-stop shop. Ironically, the one-stop shop is in the library. So she's going to the library. Education and training, I would eventually want to join the library. This is a lady who can't even leave the house. All of a sudden, she's already talking about going to the library. Um, finances and money, I'd like to maximise my benefits and understand uh, personal independent payment, you know, the, the change off from DLA. Um, short term, I'd like to open a bank account savings account. This is a massive problem for her. All she was doing, she had a, she had a post office account. What she was doing, on Wednesday, she won't get her money. Two weeks' money, the post office is so far away, she should get all the money out. All of a sudden, she had loads of friends. They'd all come and they'd all see her and go, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. On the Thursday, Thursday evening, all our money's gone, and so were friends. And, you know, she was like, I don't, know, I don't know what I've done wrong. So we sat down and we had a chat about it. So let's think about, now then, just, it's just a little step now she can help you. Let's think about why you don't get a bank account. Is it is a cash point across the road? You can just go and use that. If you want to go shopping, you can go and use it, use your card. You don't have to take any cash, you don't have to borrow with any cash. So that's what we've done. Just that little step was enough to, to set her on the right way. Manic, uh, medication. This is what she was having trouble with medication. I want to manage my medication myself, keep up to date on prescriptions, and remain stable. So, again, this is what we've given her. We're saying to her all about self management and empowerment. Well, you know, you're an adult, you're making choices. Whether they're wrong choices or not, they're your choices. This is what we should be doing. Uh, to engage with the CPN, to monitor the signs of relapse, to remain compliant with the depot because they abstain from any illicit substances. This is done to her now, so she knows directly what she's got to do to, make, to hit them targets. Parent and caring, the, the, the plan that I had was no identified need. This girl, her mother is an absolute chronic alcoholic. She's like six stone and she's imminently gonna die if, if she doesn't get treatment. Massive cause concern for this lady. So. I would say that, that that's not a net need, or that's not a, sorry, that's not um, uh, no, no, uh, nothing required. What, what we said to her was, right, okay, what can we do now to secure, make your mother safe, your mother? So, we done a uh, referral to families first, we've done that because her daughter was taken off her when she was three, and rightly so, because she was absolutely chaotic. Now, the daughter's 18, she's thinking, do you know what, I would love to get my daughter back in my life, and I would love to explain where I, where I went wrong. But yes, I've been in prison. Yes, I've done this. Now I've got my own tenancy. I'm secure and safe on my medication, and I want her to be proud of me. So this is what we we looked at: uh, referral to families first, 
access support and ongoing problems regarding parent-child relationships. Uh, to meet your mother support worker to gain an understanding of any intervention that may be needed and who she should contact in an emergency. So that's what we've done. We spoke to, sorry, Griff, we spoke to um, social services and they give us a substance misuse worker for our mother. Absolutely, this is what this lady needs. Uh, social, cultural and spiritual, this lady's whole day was Jeremy Kyle and Holmes and Rihanna. But if you haven't got an illness, believe me you will. I, I was off work for a fortnight, I was off work for a week, but there was a lady that well, I would have had a cancer treatment in the, uh, in, in the office where I was working, and they said, Dad, you'll have to have another week off just in case, and then we bring it back. Brilliant, superb, I'm paid for it. I got to be honest, right? Daytime TV almost killed me. I had a beard like Grizzly Adams. I didn't wash. It was a terrible, terrible situation. Um, so this is what we've done. You know, we, we took her up to have a lot of CT. Um, we, we again, we contacted her and got some transport sorted out. If she didn't turn up, then I was down to her then. We were going to be ringing and chasing and cajoling her. This is her plan. If you want to be involved in your plan, then you'd be involved all the way through your plan. Um, confidence to go up and shopping. So you know, and on the on the right there, this, this is what this is the, pe the people who's going to do these things. Um, have a have a RCT and in person and uh, ILS workers because what we were doing was she didn't have any support at all. So we was accessing networks, and uh, you know, outcomes we achieved. And this is this is a real problem. Was she was she's a lovely, absolutely lovely person with wear a heart on a sleeve. All the local wrongings see her coming a mile away and they'd all turn up and they'd all do this and they'd all beat her up, they'd all steal off her. So this is what we, we, we spoke about um, through the previous abusive relationships, it's the need for domestic violence prevention and harm reduction, referral to the Oasis Centre, um, due to certain individuals that she had at the flat, staff are not allowed to visit alone, this is another problem, she would have every wrong and under the sun, although she's lovely, we're going into somewhere with his needles and everything, absolute nightmare. Um, so, you know, these, these, um, and this, is, this again is, is really important, is speaking to someone, not much of what they, what you think as a professional that they relapse indicators are, let's talk about, let's talk to the carer who, who's like with them 95% of the time, who knows their little signs and situations, that's, that's going to escalate. Um, so this is what, this is what we've done for her. Uh, the, the, the helplines we had. Um, before, before we started out the plan for her, I remember I was at Christmas, we, we were on break, we were on a, a break, so I said, we're right, okay. Let's write down now everything now that all your, your, your supporting networks, S4, your, 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 your CPM down, it's got the Samaritans down. So I had a piece of paper like this, and I wrote it all down. This is who we got a phone. After the, after the holidays, we went back to see her. Everything alright? Yeah, fine. So where's the, where's the paper now? Oh, yeah, she said. Written over the top of all the helplines was Kebab Delight. <laughs> where she used to phone the kebab shop when she was feeling low and get herself a massive double kebab. And it was better than uh, all the helplines, apparently. So, so that's what we should have put, actually, in her, in her uh, country <laughs> compound, thinking about it. I think that is... <clears throat> That there agrees with this care plan. How many times have I seen care plans where they don't agree to it, especially in the secure services? <coughs> I do not agree with this care plan. I do not, I do not want to get involved with this care plan. To have someone to say, I agree with this care plan because it involves them. Um, going back again to the hospital, the, the, the difference in people, they will have a, they will have a more enhanced section sent in need because their behaviour was improving because they were actually involved in their plan. They, I, I remember this, this one guy, he said, oh, my mother wants to come and see you, as if I were the Messiah. And I, well, I, 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 if you want to speak, please speak to me, but she's like, oh, brilliant. We've got so many plans and they've all, <clears throat> they've all gone. So thanks for getting my son involved. And so, well, I mean, this is partly you, you again, as long as your son's happy with you having a plan. She had a plan and, and you know, I, I heard that he's doing, he's doing really, really well now. Um, 